Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. For a very long time, I've wanted a real Sound Blaster card in this SFF retro gaming PC, because Windows XP, of course I want a Sound Blaster, because it is of that era. However, I've struggled to find a low-profile version, as most Sound Blasters you will find, literally like 90% of them are full height. There is one card that worked for me, and I bought one for about $15. This is the one Sound Blaster that will fit in this system, and it is the Audigy ZS. Board number SB0570. Now this is an absolutely minuscule card, like, of course it's quite short, but, as in like height, but it's pretty long, like it's as, almost as long as this 9400 GT, and it's got a lot of stuff on it. So of course here's your main chip, you have a crap ton of caps here. And you've got one of these little chips by every audio output. So it actually is, just from the board design, it is a very complex and hopefully capable sound blaster. Now I'm just upgrading from the crap onboard audio, and I really dislike it because A, I listen to a lot of MIDI on this system and it doesn't have onboard MIDI decoding, it just uses the Microsoft software synth. And B, it has an awful hum and buzz. It's like... It's like coil wine, but it is through your headphones. It is... It sounds like a group of hamsters fighting. It's just like, ee constantly. And it's... I made a video a while back of interference on a Lenovo PC's speaker making bad sounds. I think it's called like PC speaker making terrible sounds or something. It literally sounds like that through the headphones and I really don't like that. Now I've already opened it up and unplugged it. Here is my glorious system. That's the little Realtek chip I believe for two reasons. Because A, it's got a Realtek logo on it and the chip is made by Realtek. And B, that is a CD audio header, so this port on your CD drive, can't see it, this port on your CD drive could go straight to there, but it's not connected for some reason. Then we have two filter caps, which is pathetic compared to a board like this with so many. Like, this is definitely a high tier sound card. Another actually is a PCIe X1 sound blaster. But I didn't want that, since my uh, PCIe X1 slot is right here, and that would really block the GPU's airflow, because it's the length of this card. That would go right over the fan. And if I ever buy a dual-slot GPU, that just wouldn't work. So we will slip these back down. Now this card is 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Which is, um, for reference, that's the bitrate of the Sound Blaster Live that I have. Live with an exclamation mark. It's a Dell OEM part. I also have a Sound Blaster 32 that I think it is that. And my Sound Blaster Z is 24 bit 192 kilohertz. But that's like a 2012 model. This is from early 2000s, maybe even late 90s because again, it's an Audigy series. But without any further ado, let's get it powered on. All right, monitor on, PC on. And I'm gonna be evaluating its sound quality as a musician, so you know, what the samples actually sound like. This has onboard MIDI hardware, so it can actually process MIDI. Okay, it looks, looks like we're booting, that's good. But it can process MIDI unlike the Sound Blaster Live, but in terms of other hardware, it seems to be most like that card out of the few Sound Blasters that I do own. Alright, I apologize for the little 
Mare effect that you are seeing. Again, CRT, I can't see it. So first, I'm literally just going to try some MP3s. Cool. What about that? Wow. I'm actually just going to pause it and, um, yeah, I'm not hearing any of that interference. Which, like, with the old sound card right now, I would be hearing that sound, which, that's already an improvement. If the MIDI sounds the same, I will still be satisfied. Alright, that's pretty nice. Now, of course, because it's working, the, the sound card is, you know, selected, but... Here we go, Sound Blaster Live 24-bit. I just want to make sure that everything is set to it. Creative Sound Font Synth. Interesting. So that's what it's called. Then, you know. Sound Blaster Audigy. And then we're using this driver from 07. Now, our real tech isn't even showing up on the list of audio devices, which is interesting. Did it just, like, disable it when a better sound card was installed? Did it just give up? Uh, let's see, I'll try, I'll try something else. This sounds absolutely incredible. Now, let me explain what I'm hearing really quickly. I'm just gonna put my headphones over the monitor, because that's what people do. But let me just explain. So its sound stage is so much wider. It even with these headphones, which aren't too good. I don't know. It the old sound card sounded really closed off, like you know, you were in a small room. But this is it's much more open. You can hear a lot more from your music. And of course, the sound is clearer, the noise flow no, noise floor is lower. Which, of course, that means you're going to get less hum, buzz, and hiss. This is absolutely, like, I'm just blown away by what this little card can do. Now, I have this secret weapon in my music, the GeoCities MIDI Archive. Let's see, how many MIDIs is this? 48,000 MIDI files. Uh... 1.33 gigabytes. Like, 1.33 gigabytes of midis is absolutely humongous, considering each is like a couple kilobytes. So I have a pretty unlimited supply of old internet midis from the 90s and 2000s. But I also, on this drive I'm plugging in, I have some newer midis that utilize more samples. Now I believe I should be able to switch between the... Yeah, so Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. I'm gonna have a listen to some songs with the GS Wavetable, and then with the Creative Sound font. Because the GS Wavetable is what the old sound card was using, that's... If your sound card doesn't have MIDI decoding on it, it's just going to fall back onto this. This is software. I don't know what to say. Even the software synth sounds better through this card. That is how crap the onboard audio is. If the software synth doesn't sound like acceptable, that's a that's not good. Okay, creative sound font. We're gonna switch to this. I'm expecting greatness. Oh my god. And greatness I should have expected. I'll give it more time. Wow. Okay. So that, um... <laughs> I'm lost for words. I am impressed with this card. So basically, its samples are way better sounding. Like, yeah, I knew MIDI hardware better than MIDI software, but still, like... Let's, let's see. I'll try one with more sounds, more samples. Okay, so Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This by the Eurythmics, which I guess the uploader on GeoCities spelled it wrong. It's not Eurythmics. 
that is probably the best example. So the sound of the um, of the sound font, the creative synth, is just way more fleshed out. It's just way more, you know, deep, open, as I said earlier. So I think there's no way to describe it other than literally just putting some sound samples in a video. So next video will literally be just a comparison between the the software synth and the creative sound font. But I am I am completely impressed. Now there is one more that I really want to listen to. Let's see, where is it? The documents my music. There we go. Okay, the in folder has the most good midis in it for anyone who downloads this GeoCities collection. Actually, I'll try like two more. Okay, there's a lot of stuff, like things like very faint sound effects, like symbols that are toned way down. You start to hear those with this sound card. Background sound effects, like whoosh kind of things that, that either just came across as like static sounding, they actually change in dynamic with this card. So it really just adds so much more depth to the music. This is, this is just a lot of midis. So I've got a lot to pick from, but I think I'll do one more. Here we go, boys. Well, first I'm gonna listen to it with GS, and then with the creative. All right, that brings me to my next point, waveforms. Instruments that are supposed to sound like, you know, guitar, flute, this does piano samples pretty well, the GS wavetable, but for things that are supposed to sound like, you know, flutes, guitars, in music, it's just a square wave. So you really get no dynamic change. But with, uh, well, first I'll have to listen to the same song with the sound font, but I've been noticing a general trend of, you know, more depth again i'm i'm i keep using that word because it's really the only way to describe it without you hearing it again next video will be you know an, an actual comparison but there's just so much more to the waveform the dynamic really does change and it seems like it's not the same dynamic change every time it really does adapt to the music and again, we're talking about 20-year-old midis, but it's just incredible how, how different it sounds. Okay, there's like, there's like a violin sound effect that doesn't even, you can't even hear it with the GS. But it's a really prominent part of the song with the creative. I just find that ridiculous. Like, how, how can you ignore that whole sample? Whoa! Okay, there was just a, like a piano riff. There was reverb! There was an echo! The wave didn't just stop when the note, when the note stopped. And... That brings me to my next point, again, I am going to have to say that the reverb on this card is like crazy, not in a bad way, like the sample, it gives samples so much more depth to have reverb. That's why instruments have a body and not, they're not literally just like the neck and strings. Because the reverb really does, you know, give it depth. That comes across so well with this card. And again, it's not the same reverberation effect every time. It really does change in length depending on what notes are next. So, it sounds fantastic and very different than what I'm used to from this computer. So yes, it's the Audigy SE. It's really not that expensive of a card. 
but unless you know that exact, you know, model name, they're pretty hard to find because no one knows that these exist. That's why they're so cheap, because people just want to sell them off. Now, here are the other cards in the Audigy... Oh, that's cool, the die shot. But, you know... It's an Audigy series card. Here are the rest of them. So, yeah, 24-bit sound card. Apparently, doesn't support end-to-end -end playback of 2496. That's interesting, I did not know that. So yeah, it's got a wavetable 64 voice synthesizer, which is not bad at all. Now, I believe there's a 1570. What's an HDA card? Oh, it's like... I think that's like the, the onboard sound. SB1570. I see one mention on Amazon for it. Okay, yeah, the, the 1570, never mind. That's the PCIe X1 card. That is, I guess, you know, slightly better but wouldn't have worked in my system. Anyway, I am super impressed with this card. But that is it for this video. Next video is going to be a MIDI test. Uh, if you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing. That's it for this video though. Thank you everyone for watching, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.